some of the things that we bring in our suitcases. Um, so I think it's really important to have like a variety of different things um, and things that excite you and things that also might excite um, teenagers and young people. So um, air dough is something we use quite a lot, so we can't use clay in the hospital. Um, so air dough is great and the other thing is it dries quite quickly uh, and then it can be painted. It's also very bouncy so you can basically throw it against the wall if you get away with that. Um, but it's a really good sort of extra thing. Uh, yeah, um, and you can also use some markers on it as well, yeah. which is nice if you don't want to use um, wet materials or someone wants to take something home very soon. Mm -hmm. um, then also in terms of uh, wet materials, um, we love uh, tattoo transfers. Mm -hmm. So they're really easy to use. You can design directly on paper using marker or you can print out some kind of pre-designed or um, you know, pre-existing symbols um, that then young people can decorate a little bit more themselves. It works really easily, um, at least with uh, this sheet, uh, this brand that we found. When you have made your print or your design on marker, then you can peel off some clear plastic that applies some sticky onto the tattoo. Always remember to print backwards so it'll come out forwards on the skin. Um, you peel back off the clear sticky um, adhesive um, so that the tattoo adheres to the skin and then we usually use some um, cotton buds just slightly damp placed on top of the tattoo for up to five minutes and then the transfer will be put fully transferred onto the skin and one of the things I especially like about working in hospitals is that they have are lots of sinks and wash basins so you've always got access to water so when people ask us what's in the case usually our answer is more like what's not in the case but at least we don't have to have a sink yeah, <laughs> they're all there. And I think the other thing about the tattoo paper is um, a lot of children when they're in hospital, especially the teenagers, there might be like one teenager on each ward, so they can be quite isolated. So if we've been working on a project where they sort of develop a group identity, um, and that's really nice so that if they could, you know, design their own tattoos and then a couple of them were wearing it so that they're all sort of spotting each other throughout the hospital wearing the same thing. Um, one of the other things we use a lot, I, oh, I love these fairy lights. Fairy lights, torches, um, anything that's sort of just going to change the environment slightly. So uh, if you're stuck in the same room, especially if you're in isolation for a long period of time, um, anything that's going to change your environment and make you sort of reimagine it is really important. Uh, fairy lights are also great. Like we've made, we've put different um, sort of pieces on them. We've made a pair of lungs with them once. Um, when kids who have cystic fibrosis are taught um, to say cystic fibrosis, they're taught to say 65 roses. So we made 65 little rose fairy light pieces um, and they were actually they're really good for sort of night time because a lot of the teenagers everything sort of gets very quiet in the evening and they're awake until sometimes two or three in the morning so it's nice to be able to have some way of sort of lighting up their own space. Um, so in terms of modifying your environment as well uh, we often use surgical or medical implements so one thing that we found really fun to use are plastic syringes that a lot of young people will be very familiar with um, through their healthcare history. And what we've done in the past are things like fill these syringes up with different coloured paint and then inject the paint into water or directly onto um, a sheet of paper. Um, Japanese uh, paper I found is especially lovely because it absorbs inks and it absorbs paints really well. And I guess it's just another way that young people can kind of take the more, the, the kind of less enjoyable aspects of the environment they're in and do something creative with them, reimagine their purpose, and then I guess kind of gain a, like a, another sense of autonomy over this space because they're in charge of what they're using when and how and to do that in a creative way and express themselves. Um, the other thing when we're talking about reimagining that's really nice is um, body paints or face paints. Um, so if you're reimagining you know, your space, you can also reimagine your body. So instead of sometimes looking at it as something that's not working, it's quite nice to be quite playful with it. So we've done a lot of sort of body painting or um, creating like costumes that you can wear and that type of thing just as a way of sort of reimagining your body as well. Um, Posca pens, these are amazing and um, are, are totally fine to be used with children. Um, great, or you can use them on the, directly onto windows and then you can wipe them off. So that's nice in terms of if you're in, again, in isolation, so you can you know, work onto the windows or onto your doors. Um, they're great on acetate as well, in case you are terrified of getting in trouble, but 
with working on windows or doors. Um, and they're really good on fabrics. So um, you can work over like t-shirts or shoes or runners or anything with them. Um, and they're really good. They're like a washer-based paint marker. Um, and so one thing we're always doing is keeping our eyes out for something that's fun and unusual and that will, I guess, excite young people, something new to work with. Um, something that I love are these um, now very cheap to, to acquire um, uh, cameras that take little uh, tiny SD cards um, and that come with their own underwater case. And this has been so exciting and so fun to work with. Um, because the young person themselves can uh, fit the camera inside of the case and there's that kind of whole risk taking element in terms of uh, them uh, taking on the responsibility for what will happen to the technology and then directing a creative process where they don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be. If you shove this underwater camera into a basin of water and then we use our syringes to squirt colour paint in, we have no control over what that's going to look like. Um, so it's, it's uh, in, you know, encouraging them to be open to the creative process and then appreciate what has been created out of it. Um, and yeah, so basically things that are just slightly different as well. And again, things that excite you are important. So um, these are ice molds and they are sort of spherical ice molds that I got. Um, and I found that a lot of the teenagers who would be working on hemodialysis would have a real interest in water. Um, and we've done a lot of work around sort of recording the sounds of the dialysis machines. Um, and then that came one step to, if you freeze water, what you can do with it. So we made, we made sort of little, um, little worlds inside these and we froze them within the water. And then we also, another day, sort of put, poured paint and stuff into them. And then we used the ice cubes to draw and to paint with. So just experimenting with things and having um, no idea of where they're going to go, I think is really exciting so that both of you are on the that sort of same exciting track where no one knows what's going to happen. The most important thing is to check with whatever hospital you're working with because it's amazing the different wards and different hospitals that have different um, sort of regulations and what you can and you can't bring in. Glitter is a big no-no in terms of MRI machines and um, clay and things that have dust in them again, not a good idea. Um, in a lot of the isolation wards you can bring things in but then they'll never come back out so don't bring like a huge roll of fabric. I tend to cut things up into small pieces and put them into um, just little plastic sandwich bags so then you can bring them into each uh, individual room. Mm. And just keeping an eye on like how long you've had materials for. Yeah. So I'm very conscious of things like the felt tips and felt tip markers. Um, mm. You know, what they may pick up as they've been used by, you know, a number of young people. So try and uh, renew your materials, replenish them as often as you can. And obviously that means that you've kind of got to be very uh, clever with your budget. Try and think of things that you can get that good quality use out of, even though the length of time that you may have it may not be very yeah. long. And constantly before you enter the hospital, check what's in your kit. So um, you know, check to make sure that you have everything that you need. Check that everything is clean. Um, we carry around um, sterilizing fluid for our own hands each time that you work with um, equipment before you pass it on to another person just to kind of make sure there's that extra level of hygiene and um, within the hospital they use um, sterilizing wipes called azo wipes so they're handy to have as well just for a quick sterilizing wipe down mm -hmm. and then also in terms of um, we would use ipads and technology a lot they're great for like stop motion animation but there's only certain cases that you're allowed to carry the iPads in, so just double check that with the hospital. Um, this one's an Otterbox one, and basically could close to be dipped in bleach and it wouldn't go through. Um, they have different types of uh, cleaning that you need to do in the morning and the evening, so just make sure that you follow all those regulations. 